Hello, welcome to Michael's Musings on Music. Today we continue our series on three stories about a composer. Today I want to tell you three stories about Joseph Haydn. Now the first two stories are about two of his symphonies. The Farewell Symphony, number 45, and the Surprise Symphony, number 94. So for about 30 years, Haydn was in the employ of the Esterhazy family, and these were very uh, rich, noble family. And Haydn was their Kapellmeister. So his job was to write music for the prince. And Haydn actually wrote an unfortunate number of trios for the prince's favorite instrument, the baritone. And no, I don't know anything about it either. But I digress. Every spring, the court would move to their country estate through the summer and then come back to the city in the fall. But for many years, this return to the city was getting later and later. And uh, the musicians were quite upset about this because th that meant more and more time away from their families in the city. So Haydn had an idea to give the prince a little hint about how the musicians were feeling. And so in his latest symphony at the very end, he would stop writing individual parts. So when a musician's music had run out, he would extinguish his candle, stand up, and leave the stage. And this happened one by one until at the very end of the symphony, there was only two musicians left on the stage, Haydn and his concert master, playing this forlorn duet. Well, the prince got the hint, and the very next day they returned to the city. Now, the Surprise Symphony, number 94, was written quite a few years later for the public, uh, uh, specifically the London public. And Haydn had noticed that uh, the unfortunate habit of audience members in London sort of nodding off as the slow movement uh, was performed of a symphony. So Haydn wrote his slow movement of his symphony number 94 very tranquilly, very beautifully, very quietly. And then as the music was getting softer and softer, the silence is shattered with this huge loud chord. At the premiere, the audience nearly leapt out of their seats. My final story of Joseph Haydn is the curious story about Haydn's head. Now, when Haydn died, he was hastily buried in Vienna. But about five years after this, the Esterhazy family, the family I was talking about that employed Haydn for many years, wanted to uh, bury his body at their estate. So the body was exhumed and it was discovered that his head was missing. Now, who could have done this? As it turns out, two amateur enthusiasts of the now debunked science of phrenology, which is the science, uh, pseudoscience of feeling for bumps on the skull that will um, uh, indicate certain uh, personality traits and talents. And Haydn, being a very famous composer, was a great uh, specimen to, 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 uh, this, to kind of um, do work on. So these two uh, young fellows uh, stole the head from the grave and kept it. Now, eventually the authorities tracked it down and, and had a suspicion that it was these two, two people. And so one of the robber's wife actually hid the head in the straw of her mattress and pretended to be sleeping when they were searching the house to try to find this head. Now, after many trials and tribulations, I mean many trials and tribulations, over, over many, many years, it wasn't until 1954, so 131 years after the robbery, did Haydn's head and Haydn's body finally rest in peace together. Next time, I want to tell you three stories about Rossini. <laughs>